we have a, a special treat tonight. Um, we have a guest here, Valerie Herman, is, um, is going to share a few words with us. Um, Val is somebody who I've, I've known, it's been, a, a, I've met Val earlier, uh, earlier this year, I think end of last year, earlier this year, something like that. Yeah. And, um, and as I've gotten to know her, I've just been amazed at what an incredible person she is and um, what, she, what she has brought to Jacksonville. Um, a few years ago, there was, um, there was nothing related to permaculture happening in Jacksonville. And uh, Val came and she started a group uh, called the Jacksonville Permaculture Meetup and she started that ball, ball rolling. And I'm going to let her tell you a little bit about what permaculture means to her um, and without further ado. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. That is what permaculture and my life's work is all about, to restore hope and inspiration to people's hearts, but demonstrating that there is a way to design a system based around our needs that does not endanger or destroy the life around it. In fact, there is a way to meet all of our needs while regenerating resources instead of destroying them. And these solutions can be found here in the Edgewood Food Park. I cannot stress enough how far modern agri-farms have strayed from having partnership with the land. Huge tracts of the same crop sprayed with chemicals and tilled with machines leaves what was once fertile and sustained whole cities with food barren deserts. There is a huge distance between us and the malpractices of agribusiness that provide food for us. This distance has, without our even realizing it, taken away our responsibility to look after the health of our planet. And without us having responsibility to tend the land, we lose all power and any hope of regenerating it. The thief comes to steal and kill and destroy. I came that, may, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. John 10.10. In permaculture, we teach how to create and regenerate our resources from all that the Lord has already provided. a little bit about regenerating the earth and that's so key something that we have lost is the understanding that our health starts here the food that we take from the soil that feeds our bodies finds its source of nutrition in the soil and in the life that's that's living in the soil um, and so when we eat every time we eat we are relying on this this web this chain of life that like Val was talking about, we've become very, very far separated from, right? And the way that things are done on a, on an, uh, a big farm, you know, an a, uh, agribusiness farm, like you were talking about, is that they, they try to use different techniques to get as much profit and much production out of the land as possible in the short term. And what that does is that it, um, it basically interferes with the life cycle of the nutrient, the, the microbes in the soil, with the, the bugs and, and different creatures that live around the plants, and even the plants themselves. And so we end up with a situation where everything is kind of going downhill. But if we take a step back and start with the soil, and this is why you'll see that we've really gone out of our way to feed the soil around here. We're giving it lots of wood. Um, 
plenty of straw, lots of things that are going to decompose slowly over time and all of the life that's in the soil is going to, is going to feed our plants and it's going to then in turn make us healthier. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, for me, I, I love watching things grow. I love the fact that we can make ourselves more healthy by taking care of the soil. But if you want to know what really drives me and what has made me want to do this kind of thing and see this, this kind of garden spring up all over Jacksonville and around wherever we can put them, it's freedom. Now when I say freedom, what I mean is roughly the ability to conceive of something better than what we currently have and then the power to go out and create that thing. And there are a lot of things that cause us to lose our freedom. Poor health is one of them. Um, a lack of knowledge is another one. And sometimes it's something as simple as not knowing anybody else who wants to help. And when we sit and we're alone and we feel, and our, and our lives and our society tends to isolate us, doesn't it? The way that we're entertained, the way that we communicate even. Um, you know, you send an email and I'm here and the recipient is way over there, right? It's different than a face-to-face. -face. Wonderful to see. And to me, it feels good. And it's sweet. I can almost taste it. Um, and I think that that's why so many of you who have been coming out week after week have come back. Because it's, it's wonderful to feel that sense of having an idea and, and getting behind it and then seeing it come to pass and seeing it grow literally right before your eyes. And then the fact that we're, we're not only we're trying to do a good thing, but we're trying to do something that's natural, that plugs into sort of the, the real economy that's out there. If you think about the economy that we live in, it's based on scarcity. It's based on me not having stuff that I need to, so I need to trade with you. But if you look at the way that the world works, the baseline, the base of our real economy on Earth is abundance. It's unlimited energy from the sun. It's cycles of nutri nutrients that basically allow us to use these things indefinitely without end. And it's a things like a water cycle and a nutrient cycle. Um, and so with that foundation, if we can learn to plug into that rather than fighting against it, which is kind of what we do with our the way our farming works now, uh, if we can go with it rather than fight against it, then we gain so much more freedom to act and to see things really grow and really, really uh, take off in ways that are surprising. Um, I mean, it's little stuff like people come up and ask, you know, what fertilizer did you put on the okra? And we say, none. We didn't have to. You also notice there's no irrigation system. Well, there is. It's just not a mechanical one. It's a natural one, right? So we've, we're trying to bring together the knowledge and the resources, the space, and the people to set ourselves free, to build a system that doesn't rely on destructive principles, but one that relies on natural principles, life principles. And by doing that, we get to reap all these benefits from the food that we're eating to, I mean, things like that poem, right? And this experience, all of us here being together, meeting new people, enjoying the communication, the, the talking, the friendships that form. Um, this is all coming out of the garden because of, of how we're trying to bring it all together and organize these things. Um, there's been a lot of mention and, and we've kind of done things a little differently tonight. We don't usually start our events with a prayer or end with a prayer, although um, I think it's fully appropriate since we're in a partnership with the Florida Christian Center. But whereas we're not necessarily a faith-based organization, we are a freedom-based organization. And so the freedom to express yourself and the freedom to worship and the freedom to, to share your, the most personal feelings that you have in the language that makes the most sense to you is something that we do respect and honor. And for me personally, I believe in God and I believe in a creation. And I believe that man's first home was a garden. And that when we're in a garden, we can feel that joy, realizing that this system that we live in was designed for us 
to make us happy and to give us the things that we need in order to live. And so I'm very grateful to be here with you and I, I hope that you will uh, come out. I'm going to tell you a little bit about some of the different ways you can be involved. Um, other than the volunteer events that we will probably continue having every, every other week or so. Um, and those are posted on Facebook if you want to learn more about when those are happening. We're also going to have a market day every month in which we'll have a farmer's market kind of set up out here and um, probably more in the parking lot right there. And everyone from the community can come and, you know, spend your money of local people, local artisans and craftsmen, craftspeople, and also buy food from the garden. Um, we're also going to have a meal day once a month where we either prepare a meal or have someone come in and give a cooking demonstration of how to use the food that's coming from this garden. And then we're going to give away food at that point to a lot of, you know, to the people who live around here who need it and, um, and just the, the people who, who come to those events. Um, we're also going to have a basket program and those who volunteer especially um, can, can earn vouchers or credits to receive a basket of fresh produce um, on, on the weeks when we're not doing a market day or, or a meal day. And that way, that's, those are some of the ways that we want to get this food and the bounty that it represents out into the community. Um, and then another really easy way to get involved um, is tell people about it. Share what you've learned tonight, spread it around, tell your friends. When you, when you hear about an event, come and bring somebody with you and they'll be able to start learning and we'll be able to, to do these things and build, build this kind of system in more places in Jacksonville. So thank you all very much for coming tonight. We're gonna have a benediction by uh, Brent Reynolds. And then I'd like to have all of the volunteers who've come out, even if you only out, came out once, come up after the benediction and we have a couple of vouchers for you and a copy of the poem that was read tonight. Thank you.